Hey, hey there guys. Sorry about that. I just got caught up playing this game here. It's called Chicken Dinner. I absolutely love it and I really believe that your students will too. You see, it caters for a wide range of abilities and addresses skills from supertizing to looking at probability and statistics up in year 10. It is perfect for students of all abilities. Now, if you want to check out or find out more about it, make sure you hang around until after the intro. Well, hey there, my name is Tom Moore and I am the founder of Engagement Mathematics and the creator of this game here, Chicken Dinner. Now growing up, I had a number of pets and in fact, some of these pets were chickens. Now, it was my job each night to go out and feed the chickens. So I'd walk out and I'd throw their pallets all over the ground. And in fact, there were some times where I'd be able to look down on the ground and know just how many pallets there were there but without having to count them one by one. And in fact, it's this skill that this game helps to develop within our students. It's called supertizing, and it's an important building block for a strong understanding of number. All right, so let me show you how to access this game and how to use it with your students. Now, if you're watching this video, there's a fair chance that you have been given a link to the PDF that you can see on your screen now. If you haven't been given a link, Fear no more, because you can go to the Engage Me Mathematics YouTube channel and find the video that you're watching right now, the chicken dinner video, and you'll find a link to this PDF in the description below. Now, when it comes time to printing out all of these sheets, you'll find that there are 60 sheets for you to print out. These 60 sheets make up 30 different game boards that you can use with your students. Each game board is made up of a sheet with dots and also a blank sheet for you to be able to explore the game further on down the track. When printing these out, I recommend that you print them out single-sided. This allows you to have this sheet here, as well as your blank game board, put them both together and laminate them. This means that the laminated sheet becomes more sturdy, and also it means that you cannot see the dots through this way when you're exploring the game further. Now playing the game is simple. Students will need their own game board, and some counters or a whiteboard marker in order to keep track of the numbers as they come up. As a teacher, you will need to have two 10-sided dice with the numbers from zero to nine. You will then simply roll these dice and add the two numbers that come up. For example, you can see on our screen now, the two numbers have come up total to a sum of nine. What students now do is they look on their game boards for the number nine or something with nine dots. Now these nine dots can be made up in any way. They could be a seven and two, like you can see on my game board here, or they could be a six and a three, or maybe three threes, or any other way they could make nine that they can see on their game board. When they find it, simply put a counter on top or cross it off to keep track of what numbers have come up for them. Once students have found their own number on their own game board, Encourage them to have a look at their partners next to them to see if they can find the number nine on their game board as well. At this point in time though, encourage students not to show them where the number nine is, but in fact tell them how they can see it. For example, I have a seven and a two on my game board, but maybe on my partner's game board, I can see a six and a three or a five and a four. Now here's a little teacher tip for you too. Whilst you play the game, Keep an eye out for students who are able to find the numbers on their boards quickly. Ask these students how they see these numbers. For example, do they see a six and a three? Is it a five and a four? Is it a seven and a two? By getting students to reiterate all the different ways that they can see the number nine, it helps students to all be able to recognize the part, part, whole nature of these numbers. Now to win, it's just like bingo. All students need to do is cover four spaces in a row, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. And as soon as they do this, they need to call out, Winner, winner, chicken dinner! And, of course, enthusiasm is encouraged. Now, I encourage you to play this game a few times with your students and just sort of see what happens. Do some game boards win more often than others? Well, this is a fantastic question to really delve deep into this task and open up a fantastic 
and rich mathematical investigation. And this is where this side of the game board comes into play. You see, the challenge for students now is to come up with their own game board that is most likely to win. Remember, you can only use each number from 0 to 18 once. So therefore, some numbers you might not use, but you cannot use a number twice. I'm going to leave you with that now, and you can go off and explore your own game boards and see which game board is most likely to win. Best of luck. Now, if you like this video slash activity, don't forget to subscribe to the Engage Me Mathematics YouTube channel. There's a button somewhere just down there. Yep, somewhere you'll find it. I know you can. Also, like the Engage Me Mathematics Facebook page to keep up to date with all the resources that I am putting out. My name's Tom Moore, and I'll see you next time.